Hi guys, here's a video going over 6.2, Law of Cosines. After you are done watching this video, you should be able to solve triangles using Law of Cosines, as well as find the area of a triangle. So first off, what is Law of Cosines? Law of Cosines is another method for solving non-right triangles. So when we have right triangles, we can go ahead and use SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. Um, when we have non-right triangles, we can either use law of cosines or law of sines. We've already talked about law of sines, but one thing I do want to reiterate with law of sines is, and I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So uh, law of sines, LOS, you have to have an angle and its corresponding side. So in order to use law of sines, you absolutely have to have an angle and its corresponding side. So you need to have A and A, B and B, C and C. Now, if you don't have that information and you are unable to find that information, that means chances are you're going to be using law of cosines. Now, law of cosines is represented by these three formulas over here. Now, hopefully you'll notice that these formulas look very, very similar to each other. The only difference is, is that the A's, B's, and C's are switched around. Um, so what I like to remember is whatever um, angle I have, well, the angle and its corresponding side are on opposite sides of my formula. So if I'm trying to solve for side A, that means I need to have angle A um, at the end of my formula. And my B's and C's can really go anywhere. If I'm solving for side B, my A's and C's can go anywhere, but I do need to have angle B at the end of the formula. So instead of looking at three different formulas, I'm basically going to treat it as if it's just one formula with my A's, B's, and C's being interchangeable. Now, there are two types of triangles that we can use law of cosines for. We have an SAS triangle that is side angle side, and we also have a side 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 triangle. Now, both of these do have very specific steps um, in which you are going to be solving the triangle. So for a side angle side, what you're going to do is you are going to find the next side using law of cosines. And then from there, you are going to jump to find the smallest angle using law of sines. So even though we're starting off using law of cosines, in the end we're gonna use law of sines because those ratios with law of sines are a little easier to use um, than the law of cosines formula. So if you'll notice the law of cosines formula has a lot of pieces to it, as opposed to law of sines, which is just cross multiplication. The other type of triangle we have is the side, side, side triangle. So from here, you're going to start by finding the largest angle using law of cosines, and then you'll find the smallest angle using law of sines. Okay, so that's enough explaining. Let's go ahead and actually solve a triangle. So solve triangle ABC, where A is 5.0, C is 8.0, and B is 77 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and start by sketching out my triangle so I can see what I have going on here. Again, just a generic sketch. These are not drawn to scale whatsoever. So side A is opposite angle A, so my 5.0 is down here. Side C is opposite angle C, so 8.0 is over here and angle B is 77 degrees. So that's this angle um, in the triangle. And if you'll notice, we have a side, the angle in between, and another side. So this right here is a side angle side triangle, which means we're going to be using law of cosines. Another way that you know that it's law of cosines versus law of sines is the only angle we have is the 77 degrees, and we don't actually know the corresponding side. And once again, in order to use law of sines, we have to know an angle and its corresponding side. So since I do have a side angle side triangle, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for that missing side using law of cosines. So I want to solve for side B first. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my formula. It is B squared equals my other two sides squared, so 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times your other two sides and then cosine 
of the angle across from the side that you're trying to find. So this is my B, this is my B. And then my eights and fives can really go in um, whatever order. Okay, so from here, I am going to simplify what is on the right-hand side of my formula. I'm gonna start by checking my mode on my calculator to make sure it is in degree mode. And then I'm just gonna type in this entire expression um, into my calculator all at once. There's no need to do this in pieces um, just because we're adding, subtracting, multiplying. So that's something that we can type in all at once. So I have five squared plus eight squared minus two times five times eight times cosine of 77 degrees. And that gives me approximately 71. And then to solve for B, I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of both sides so square root of 71 is approximately 8.4. So now I have side B, which is 8.4. Now, if I look back at my directions, I want to find, this is a side angle, side triangle. I wanna find the next side using law of cosines, which I did. And then from there, I wanna find the smallest angle using law of sines. Now your smallest angle is opposite your smallest side. So if side B is 8.4, my smallest side is side A, which means to solve for my smallest angle, I need to solve for A. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my known ratio now because I have B and B. So sine of 77 over 8.4 equals sine of a, which is, well, that's what I'm trying to find, sine of a over side a, which is five. Now, the reason why you have to go in a particular order when you're solving for angles using law of sines is because if you remember back to the angle side side triangles, where you could have one triangle, two triangles, or no triangles, um, by doing this in this particular order, it prevents us from having to solve for the extra triangle or um, getting our angle values uh, mixed up. So I would just follow the steps, find the third side, and then from there find the smallest angle. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm gonna cross multiply. That gives me five sine of 77 equals 8.4 times sine of A. I'm gonna divide by 8.4, and I'm gonna go ahead and take that entire expression and plug it into the calculator. So five times sine of 77 divided by 8.4. I'm gonna to go to four decimal places, maybe five. So that's 0.57998. And then of course, to solve for an angle, you always need to do the inverse trig function. So now I'm going to take that and plug it into my calculator, and that is going to give me angle A. So I have inverse sine of 0.57998, gives me approximately 35.4 degrees. So now I have angle A, and then again, in order to solve the triangle, you need all three sides, all three angles. So I have all three sides now. I have two out of my three angles. So now I can solve for angle C, which is going to be 180 minus the other two angles. So 35.4 minus the 77. So I have 180 minus 35.4 minus 77 gives me 67.6 degrees for angle C. And now my triangle is solved. All right, let's do another one. So for this one, solve triangle ABC where A is 90, B is 70, and C is 40. That gives me all three sides of the triangle. So that is going to be a side, side, side triangle. So A, B, C. So I have A is 90. B is 70 and C is 40. Now before I proceed, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my information for my side, side, side triangle. Side, side, side tells us that we need to find the largest angle using law of cosines. And then once we've used law of cosines, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the smallest angle using law of sines. 
Okay, so my largest angle is opposite my largest side. So my largest side is the 90, so that means I'm gonna go ahead and solve for angle A. So your law of cosines formula starts with the side, so I have 90 squared equals my other two sides squared, so 70 squared plus 40 squared minus two times my other two sides uh, cosine of my angle, which in this case is this is what I'm trying to find. Now for these particular problems, you can't just shove everything into your calculator. You do have to go about it strategically. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do a couple steps. So 90 squared is 8100. I can go ahead and combine these two. So 70 squared plus 40 squared is 6500 minus, and then I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these three. So I have two times 70 times 40, which is 5,600 cosine of A. Now the reason why you can't just combine everything into the calculator at once, like we did with the previous one, is now we are solving for an angle. So we're solving for cosine of A, and cosine of A is being multiplied by the 5,600. Um, so from here, I'm going to subtract the 6,500 from both sides. That gives me 8,100 minus 6,500 is 1,600 equals negative 5,600 times cosine of A. From here, I still need to divide, so I'm going to divide by negative 5,600. And that gives me, divided by... That gives me negative 0.2857. It is perfectly fine to get a negative value as you're solving. But from here, I want to get my A by itself. So since I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to use the inverse trig function. So inverse cosine of negative 0.2857. And I'm going to plug that into my calculator. So inverse cosine negative 0.2857 gives us approximately 106.6 degrees. Okay, so now that I have the largest angle, I'm going to go ahead and find the smallest angle using law of sines. So I can go ahead and set up my ratio. So I have sine of the 106.6 divided by 90 equals sine of, and then my smallest angle is gonna be opposite my smallest side, so that's gonna be angle C over 40. And once again, we can go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 90 sine of C equals 40 sine of 106.6 divided by 90. So I have sine of C equals, so 40 sine of 106.6 divided by 90 is approximately 0.4259. And then I'm gonna take the inverse. So you're always taking the inverse anytime you're solving for an angle. So inverse sine of 0.4259 gives me approximately 25.2 degrees. So I have angle A, I have angle C, the last thing I need to find is angle B, but of course I know angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and subtract both of those from 180, and then my problem is done, because we have solved the triangle. So angle B is 48.2 degrees. All right, so we've done two problems where you are solving using law of cosines. This first one was a side angle side. The second one was a side 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 where you had all three sides of your triangle. So now I'm going to move on to finding the area of a triangle when you have all three sides. So when we were doing law of sines, we did see this formula right here for area. That is when you have a side angle side triangle. So you have two sides and the angle in between. 
For today, we're going to look at the side 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 triangle and be able to find that particular area. So when you're given all three sides of the triangle, in order to solve for the area, you are going to use this. It looks a lot more intimidating than it is, um, but if I look at the information that I'm given, I have side A is 125, side B is 160, and side C is 225 yards. So the first thing I'm going to do to be able to use this formula is I'm going to start by calculating this value of S. And it says S is A plus B plus C divided by 2. So I have 125 plus 160 plus 225 and I'm going to divide that by two. So I'm gonna put that in my calculator, 125 plus 160 plus 225. That gave me 510 divided by two, gives me 255. And now that I know what S is, I can go ahead and use this area formula. So it is the square root of S, which is 255, S minus A, so 255 minus A, which was 125, times S minus B, so 255 minus 160, times S, which is 255, minus C, which is 225. And then I am just going to take that expression and plug it into my calculator. Now, as you can already see, that is a very long expression. So just be careful when you're plugging it in. So make sure you're using the 255. Just be careful with what you're typing. Sometimes people have a tendency to write 225 instead of 255. So just be careful. I am double checking as I am typing right now because I don't want to get the wrong answer. And that gives me 9,700 and, oh, we'll go ahead and round to the nearest whole number, 720 square yards. All right, so that concludes our lesson on 6.2 Law of Cosines.